Welcome to Solve It Like a Marketer. I'm Stephen Hobey. To add to my series on sustainability in business, I chatted over Zoom with Michelle Reed, community engagement and activation lead for B Lab, an organization that oversees certifying B corporations globally. Learn all about the B Corp movement and how these companies meet the highest standards of social and environmental performance accountability and transparency. If you like this video, please subscribe and enjoy. Well, thanks very much for joining me, Michelle. Yeah, it's very nice to be here, Stephen. Yeah, it's good to see you. So let's start off, I guess, just generally um, for those viewers that aren't familiar with B Corp. I've mentioned B Corp in a few of my videos, but I thought this was an exciting opportunity to really kind of delve deeper into the B Corp um, uh, philosophy. So tell me a little bit generally about its, its background and its mission. Yeah, for sure. Um, so B Corp and, and, and B Corp gets used um, in a lot of different ways. Um, so there actually is a B Lab, which is a not-for-profit that's actually behind the whole B Corp certification. And so B Lab itself was founded in 2006 um, out of the United States and really kind of founded really on the premise of Kind of creating like the shared and durable prosperity for everyone um, and just really thinking rethinking capitalism um, you know capitalism at its core you know thanks to thanks to good old Milton Freeman um, really has been kind of for the shareholders um, and just really kind of the main purpose of business has really been for profit um, and so there's a group of companies that actually believe that that can be done differently you can be a profitable organization and actually still be good to your employees you can care about the environment you can invest in your community you can be transparent in your governing practices and so that's really kind of um, the origin, how B-Lab kind of started. Um, the three founders actually had a company um, that had all those good practices kind of in place. And when they sold it, um, those practices were actually stripped out of it quite quickly. And they were quite surprised by that. And so that's really where they kind of thought, maybe there's a different way to kind of be able to form business. And so, so that's how B-Lab itself kind of started. Hmm. And uh, I'm right in saying that B Corp as an idea is, is global. I mean, there are companies, we're here in the sort of US slash Canada portion, um, but there are actually B Corps all over the world. Am I right? Yeah, that's correct. Um, we have uh, B Corps, gosh. I always forget, I always forget the thing because there's so many different industries, but I think, you know, over in, I think over in 80 countries now, um, there would be corporations. Some of the biggest concentrations uh, definitely are in South America. The UK is a really huge growing kind of market. Um, Australia and New Zealand, um, we have, uh, you know, B-Lab UK, um, and also just some emerging markets in China and Taiwan. So it definitely is a global, a global movement. Um, and I think we finally reached, um, or we just recently reached the 5,000 B Corp mark. Um, and that's super significant in a couple of ways, but it's also interesting because now the biggest concentration of B Corps are actually outside of US and Canada for the first hmm. time, uh, which is yeah, which is interesting for the movement. And there's just been um, kind of like this growing appetite for the movement uh, over the past two years. We've had over 6,000 companies actually apply to become certified wow. B Corp. And so um, it's definitely an exciting time and, and definitely have some you know bigger names kind of coming into the movement all across the world, um, which has led to which has led to kind of more folks kind of asking themselves, um, is this something that they really want to be a part of? Or, you know, how do we actually kind of measure some of our company's impacts? Mm. And I think it, I really feel, I, I agree. I feel like it's a very exciting time. 
Um, and while I think of it, if anyone's watching, be sure in your country to, to try and find um, uh, other B Corps and how to, to apply and stuff like that. And I think that, you know, we are talking more about sustainability, about human rights, um, the rights of workers, which brings me to my next question. Um, for, for us, uh, my company is also a B Corp, but what attracted us to the movement is what, you know, is coined the triple bottom line. Um, and you sort of touched on this as well, the notion of balancing people, profit, planet, which is a wonderfully simplistic and yet complex balance, but I think it's, it's universal. Um, maybe talk a little bit about that for me. Yeah, gosh, you know, being, being in sustainability, I feel like I've been in this field for 12 years, um, but definitely seeing, seeing the upsurgence in the growth over the past two years. Um, has really led me led me to pause, and I think more companies are kind of realizing that they can't continue to operate in the same way that they previously had. Whether that is, you know, investors really asking, you know, what what are you doing in, in you know, an environmental, social, and governance sphere of your organization, and really looking at that from kind of a risk factor. Or just employees saying, we don't want to work for places that actually don't have a particular mission or they're not values aligned. Um, definitely seeing that. And then even in the consumer sphere, really um, looking at consumers really want to support products that actually have a mission and a mission that they actually believe in. Mm -hmm. And that is even pushing, pushing things further. And I think what's interesting, um, really kind of in behind um, the B Corp movement really is the B Impact Assessment. And it really kind of gives that opportunity kind of for folks to really measure their company holistically. And I think it's one of the only certifications, one of the few certifications that actually does that. And I think what's interesting is that you realize that you can't really bisect these different pieces from your business. Um, they really are all interconnected. And I think, you know, kind of going through and kind of measuring and understanding the gaps in your organization is what is only going to kind of fuel or kind of align your customers really to you into your mission into this continual progression and so really that that people you know profit planet of course you have to be profitable to be a business and and to be to be a b corp you, you do have to be a for-profit business that's something we get asked a lot um, but i do think that there is such an amazing power in business um, and we have really the opportunity to really influence a lot of big issues. And that kind of leads into kind of creating that, that shared and durable prosperity for everyone that we're really trying to align with. Mm -hmm. And I think what's interesting is that as younger generations move forward um, and have more buying power, I think that, that need on the consumer side um, it's already increasing, but I think it's going to increase even more and more. Um, the consumers are going to expect companies to have an eth more ethical approach uh, to, to how they do business. Now, just out of interest sake, because uh, this may be a question for folks. Um, now, you, you work for, I guess, B Lab US slash Canada. So just put that in context, just in terms of what the relationship is between B Lab, B Corp, and then maybe what that would look like in other countries as well. Yeah, no, that's that's a good question. Um, so there is, um, if we look at kind of the structure of B Lab, so there's B Lab Global. Um, so really, anyone can you know, go on the the B Corporation.net website. That's the B Lab Global website. Um, and if you're interested in your particular country, you can find your country kind of through navigating that. Um, 
With B-Lab Global, um, outside of that kind of comes the standards advisory. And the standards advisory is the one that puts together all the certification requirements. It's really responsible um, for the third party verification behind the beam impact assessment. Um, through that, you have a lot of global partners. Um, we, we talked about B-Lab US and Canada being one of them. Um, we also have you know, B-Lab UK and Australia and New Zealand, B-Lab Europe and System of Bay and a few other country partners that kind of make up kind of that global network. Um, some countries may not, uh, may not yet have um, a country partner and that's perfectly fine. You know, you definitely can access everything kind of through the bcorporation.net website um, if you're definitely interested in learning more. And just to give people a flavor, um, what types of companies typically join or have historically joined the B Corp movement? Yeah, th that is a good question. Right now, we have close to like 155 different industries, which is wow. quite remarkable, right? Um, and they kind of range from all over. So we have, you know, B Corps that are sole proprietors all the way up to multinational corporations. Um, we have folks, you know, in textiles to construction, definitely a lot in like food and beverage. Um, if I was to, to look up what it would be in Canada, definitely have a lot in kind of like the services kind of based industries. Um, but we also have a lot that are that are kind of in different things like food and beverage. We have some really great, we even have construction um, in a Recently this year, we've seen a lot of like architects kind of come into, into the organization um, and definitely those in kind of the clothing and kind of consumer basis, uh, consumer products kind of base. Um, so really an answer, a long answer to your question, Stephen, they, they come from all over. Um, and it's, it's interesting uh, when you see folks just kind of coming from industries that aren't traditionally considered um, I wouldn't really say ethical, but maybe, you know, questionable, questionable type of industries that folks are like, mm, that's interesting um, that mm -hmm. they would decide to become a B Corp. Um, but we have folks, you know, even in like the insurance insurance space um, that are really kind of looking to kind of be leaders and really kind of redefine what it actually looks like in those particular industries and kind of are just leading the way in that particular change and that mindset. And so I think it's always exciting when we see a new a new B Corp kind of come up where you're like, oh, that's interesting. Um, and just really getting them to you know ask the question like, well, what made you decide to, to really do this this way? Mm. And I think a, another sort of philosophy that I think is wonderful about B Corp is as B Corps, we are encouraged to support each other and possibly do business with each other. Um, and I, I think, I know for us, it's, it's so wonderful to collaborate with other businesses that you immediately know are on the same page as you. You kind of, you just get it. You don't have to explain, you know, <laughs> where, where you're coming from philosophically. Everybody just gets it. And I, I think that that's incredible. Yeah, I think, you know, that's definitely one of the greatest benefits. I may be a bit biased because I'm in community, um, but but I think that's one of the greatest benefits of being part of this um, community. And we're seeing, I think, what's exciting as well is we're seeing, I call it co-opetition, um, we're seeing brands in the same space really kind of aligning with one another on particular policies or issues or wanting to change particular industry standards. Um, so we have folks kind of in the tourism industry, folks in the beauty industry, um, you know, folks just definitely in a lot of different in fashion as well. And so to looking at those particular industries and really wanting to make some of those greatest changes. And so you don't have to do it alone. You can do it together. Um, and I think it's a great community that you can also learn from. And that's something that's really emphasized as well um, is really kind of being able to share your best practices uh, for folks in order for everyone to kind of move along and get better. And so definitely, definitely can't say enough about the, the community itself. 
And also one of the wonderful things that you're doing is uh, you, you're in Canada, you've been running different uh, sessions around um, diversity, equity, inclusion. You've got one coming up on um, uh, reconciliation. I think that's really amazing too, that, that you're able to launch these really incredible topics um, that need to get talked about within the business community. Yeah, I, I think, you know, there is just, you know, this general sense that everyone really wants to kind of find find their way and kind of really they have this desire um, to continually improve and really kind of self-reflect and look at themselves. And so, like you had said, you know, you don't have to start the conversation from a point of like, no, we don't really need, we don't believe we need to do that. Um, you're already kind of starting it from, we really want to do that. How do we hear from folks, you know, and I think we're really lucky in the B Corp community here in Canada, because everyone is doing such amazing work. Um, but as Canadians, um, and we can speak to marketing, we don't tell our stories enough. We totally just do not express or tell anyone what we're doing um, because, you know, for fear of kind of, as my, uh, one of my good friends calls it green blushing, um, but, uh, but we definitely don't tell those stories enough. And so I think, you know, definitely a lot of these events give the opportunities for companies to really kind of tell those stories. I think it's really important to inspire and really important to kind of know how, like what really went into kind of creating those things in order for folks to be able to kind of follow. Now, hopefully at this point, uh, people watching are like, oh, I really want to become a B Corp or I know <laughs> another company that really wants to become a B Corp. Um, so I want to touch on the certification process, which is quite robust. Um, but as you say, um, it's a really great opportunity to get people to think about how they are doing business. Um, and it's, it's a great, if anything, a great self-reflective opportunity. But maybe just um, without dwelling too much, just give me a, a taste of, of what that process looks like for people. For sure. Um, the first thing that I want to let folks know, Stephen, is that um, anyone can create, log into the B Impact Assessment and create a profile. It's a free tool. Um, that was really one of the intentions kind of behind it as well to make it really accessible to all businesses. Um, so we talked about having 5,000 B Corps in the world. There's actually close to 200,000 um, companies that are actually using the tool. And so uh, definitely, I think it's a great tool um, just as an organization to kind of look at and just kind of do a little bit of self-examination, even if you decide not to become a B Corp. So I just wanted to put that out there first. Um, the second thing, there's really three things um, in order to become a B Corp. The first one I always say is purpose. Uh, you really have to truly kind of believe in kind of this process and really kind of digging into your organization. Purpose is so important because B Corp certification really isn't a destination. Um, it really, you know, and for lack of a better term, um, it really is this journey, this continuous journey of looking at your organization really strategically wanting to kind of improve your practices. So just kind of understanding that from the out point. And then the, the two other pieces that I would say kind of go into it is, you know, you take the B impact assessment, you have to reach a minimum score of 80 points. Um, and you have to complete a legal requirement if that is applicable in your country. And so those are really the, the two pieces. Um, it is a third party verified process. Um, and Stephen can probably attest to, there is some documentation that's kind of involved to, in order to prove the practices that you're doing. Um, but those really are the, the two pieces behind it. And it's not something, um, you know, it may take two or three hours to kind of go through the assessment itself. But some companies, you know, really kind of use it as, as a strategic guide, and it may take them years, and that's actually okay. I think it's just really important to measure. Uh, you have no idea unless you actually do those measurements of, of what what your organization really actually needs you to focus on. And I think that's probably one of the greatest benefits of it for sure. 
Mm -hmm. And I think that going through it, you know, it becomes very obvious that you want to weave the B Corp philosophy into the very DNA of your company. It's not just, you know, something you, you slap on your marketing material, that it, it's something that you live, live by. Yeah, I, you know, I think in I think in the assessment or just even in a lot of the language, it's really kind of looking at all the folks that are affected by your by your business. Um, and so it definitely looks at kind of the environment, the community, your workers, you know, folks that may um, be affected by your business, but may not necessarily have a say in what is going on in your organization. And so there really is that kind of philosophy where you're really kind of looking at that and you're really intentionally looking at how different decisions you're making in your business are affecting mm -hmm. other yeah. folks. And so, yeah, I think um, organizations that kind of get the most out of it really intentionally continue and look and kind of question um, what they're doing and why they're doing it. Yeah, and I would say just as a little piece, I know for us, it got me thinking about supply chains and who my suppliers or vendors are as a company um, and supporting people who um, uh, are also doing good in the world. But my, my final question for you actually that I just thought of is um, what, what is your, what is the bright future for B Corp? What, what, do, you, what do you hope to see <clears throat> over the next say five to 10 years? Um, and you don't have to talk globally if that's too big, we could just talk about Canada. Um, I'm just throwing it out there. Gosh, the bright future. Um, I don't want to work myself out of a job because I definitely, <laughs> I, definitely I definitely love, I love what I do. Um, but you know what, I hope in a time, and I know it won't come in five to 10 years, I know I'm being very, very optimistic. I really hope that you don't really need this kind of certification to actually, you know, force companies or like have companies really examine these things. I really am hoping that companies are kind of really intentionally looking at their business um, and, and looking at ways that affects other people and they're just realizing that they can do it a better way and that everyone can win. Um, but if I was to, to kind of look at five, five to 10 years ahead, you know, I would love to see, I would love to see Canada, at, you know, 1500 B Corps. I would love to see, you know, right now we're, we're about three, 350 plus. Um, but I would love to see more companies kind of intentionally kind of making these moves and creating their practices and their impact and, and just realizing that even very small actions can lead to amazing change in that we all need to kind of really work together. And I would love to see more folks in similar industries working together um, and not being so, um, there's a lot to share um, in this in this big wide world. Um, and so looking to see definitely a lot more collaboration. I would love to see that for sure. Wonderful. Yeah. So I will definitely pop all the various links that you mentioned uh, in the show notes and Thank you so much, Michelle. I really, really appreciate you taking the time. Thanks. Thanks, Stephen. It was a great being here. Thanks again to Michelle for taking the time to chat. If you'd like to see more videos like this, hit that subscribe button. You can also catch me on Instagram and Facebook for extra content and you never miss an episode. Those links are below. I've also included Michelle's LinkedIn and other helpful links for you to learn more about the global B Corp movement. I will see you every week with a new video, so please stay tuned and together let's solve it like a marketer.